Hello, uh, this is Lynn Jordan with the I Love of Romance Novels. That's what. And uh, today I have the privilege of being here with Diane McNeil. Uh, she's had a fascinating life. She grew up surrounded by books, and her mom taught her to read at the age of five. And she's been passionate ever since about myths, legends, and tales. She was born in the south of France and apparently recently moved away from there um, in a family of witches and soldiers. That is such an interesting combination, <laughs> but she chose to be the storyteller. Uh, she also first studied cinema before she focused on the writing. Uh, and she likes the historic fantasy sagas and the memoirs of his aunt. So that that's, is a fascinating life. Welcome, Diane. Hello, Lynn. Thank you for having me. I am so happy that you agreed to come on. Um, when did you decide you wanted to write? You've been reading since you were five, but when did you decide to, to do, step on the other side of that? Mm. Well, actually, I do write since I am a child, actually, like a lot of writers. Uh, but I decided to do it in a professional way in 2014 when I left Paris to move to south of France. And I found the first draft, the very first draft of my very first novel that I had started when I was 17 years old. And uh, it is Memoirs of High Zion in, uh, in the very old books. I will re remember all my life this, uh, this moment. So I took it and I thought, okay, this is a moment. I am starting over a lot of things and maybe this is a time to actually start doing it professionally and I want to publish, I want my stories to be read and I want to interact with my readers. That's when it happened. Oh, well, that's wonderful. Well, yeah. I know we were talking earlier about the changes in the publishing industry. What, what is your path to publicate? So I chose to self-publish for the moment. Um, I will see how things go now I am in Canada. Um, I'm sure a lot of things will evaluate. But publishing is, um, has always been in my mind since the beginning of the writing. I think there is no story that should be written if you do not share it. A story is made to be shared you know, with people, whether it is your family or your friends or even larger. It actually doesn't matter if the book is a huge and massive success as long as you share it. Mm -hmm. So from the beginning, I thought about self-publishing because I wanted to have this direct interaction as fast as possible. And what I find super interesting in self-publishing is that I, um, I write in two genres, so fantasy and romance. Mm. And uh, the audiences and expectations are very different. So I really have to think about this work as a work, I mean, of self-publishing. Mm -hmm. um, the work of cover is different. The way you write dialogues is different. Mm -hmm. The way you present your work, the way you publish it is different. It's not always the same platforms, for example. And I love this exploration that self-publishing allows. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a chance, you know, in 21st century, when we were talking about that, that it opened doors uh, to the writers. Yes, we're able to get things published now that we couldn't before when it was down to just a few publishing houses. Yeah, I remember the, um, the very first time I thought about self-publishing, I was 15 years old and there wasn't Amazon, there wasn't Kobo, all these things. Mm -hmm. It was just the beginning of internet. So we had one hour of internet per week. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> that was a long time ago. And I phoned the printers of my town to ask how much would you take to actually print 1000 copies of my books. Mm -hmm. And they were like, no we're not going to print your book. We, we don't work with amateurs. We don't work with the writers. We only work with publishing houses. Mm -hmm. So that was very violent to hear that when I was 15 years old. And it was, um, that was a triumph. You know, I really felt it like a triumph when I discovered Amazon and Kobo and all these platforms to actually share my story directly with the, with the readers. So this is my path to self-publishing. Ah, yeah. Wonderful. Uh, well, today we're mostly talking about uh, your book, Masquerade, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, do you want to tell us uh, something about that book and how, how you came to write that particular book? Yeah, actually, it was interesting because I was um, writing my heroic fantasy saga, Memories of High Zion, which is a five novel saga. And um, I heard of this massive success, um, massive success, sorry, of Fifty Shades of Grey, um, After by Anna Todd. And I was struck, you know, by this market of the uh, new romance that just bloomed over the last 10 years. 
So I thought, what if I take the challenge of writing a story that, I mean, I'm not used to writing uh, romance stories. I took it as a challenge and I thought, okay, I'm going to try. Uh, I'm going to try to write a story, a romance story. Um, what if I would write a romance story? How would it be? And I thought, okay, it would be a love story between an introvert girl, uh, someone shy, someone who loves books. That was very obvious from the beginning. And, um, and I thought, okay, I should take the opposite because that's how rom-com and romance stories work. You take two opposites and you make them connect and you see what happens. Mm -hmm. And um, I, because I worked in cinema and television, I immediately thought about this charismatic character of Olen Van Cleef, who is super handsome. And I mean, he gets into a room and all the women just fall for him. And I thought, how could things happen? How would things happen uh, when they two meet each other? And I would imagine her being very much, eh, you know, a bit proud and <laughs> contentful <laughs> because, because she wouldn't be impressed uh, by this uh, very handsome man, uh, kind of mesmerized, but not impressed. And um, yeah, I, uh, it took me two years actually to write that story. Two years. That's interesting. Uh, how do you uh, compare writing the fantasy with the romance? Do you have a favorite? <laughs> or is that a, <laughs> a leading well, question? <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a very interesting question. Um, actually, romance, I find, is a lot about, about dialogues and creating the opposites of fights. Um, and in fantasy, it's a lot about creating a universe. So I created creatures um, and uh, places that do not exist. For Masquerade, I inspired myself very much about um, New York because I've been to New York, I love that city, and um, I wanted a very urban uh, romance story. In uh, Memories of High Zion, there is a love story, but it's, it's completely at the backside. Uh, it's a story of a girl on a quest of a power. So there are two female strong characters um, and they are both independent, uh, and they are both, yeah, I mean, they don't hesitate to tell men to piss off, <laughs> but uh, in the same time, uh, they are both kind of romantic, and they're just trying to find their way in, uh, in this world, so they are the common points, and they are the opposites, um, it's a lot about dialogues, actually, in romance, the dialogues between Olen Van Cleef and uh, Candice, um, have been a pleasure to write. It was kind of funny. Well, that's neat. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your writing schedule? Well, I usually write in streetcars and trains. Uh, I totally can write in public. Actually, I, I love that. Uh, but now with COVID, <laughs> I usually schedule my writing uh, early in the morning and I try to stick to three pages um, before work because I got a day at work. So yeah, I try to do that early in the morning. So you're still working during the COVID Thing. I do. I do remote work. Yes. Well, that's good. Uh, oh, what what do you know now that you wish you'd known when you started writing? I wish I knew about the power of a cover. Um, the masquerade cover is uh, rather good. I'm, I'm I'm happy of it, and uh, everyone told me it was a, it was a good one. But for my first novel, it was a, it was a mess. <laughs> I did not take the time to actually think about it and to, yeah, to make this marketing research. I just wanted to hurry up and to get it published. And um, I, wish, I wish I knew how to take my time at the beginning. I would like to go back in time uh, and tell myself to take actually more time. You don't need to hurry to publish. You don't need to, you don't need to hurry. I think writing is like wine and it demands a lot of maturation and, and time to actually get all the flavor out of it. Yeah. Nothing happens in a hurry in publishing. Yeah. And what, what you think is going to go fast doesn't. So. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, well, what do you enjoy most about writing? Um, having the feedback and reading the comments from the readers, um, it's an incredible feeling. Uh, that some people at the other side of the continent actually connected with the characters I created um, that are drawn out of my imagination. I just love that feeling, even if it's a negative comment, actually. <laughs> they just destroy in five lines what I have uh, spent writing during two years, but that's fine, um, because it means they really finished the novel. They, they make the effort, actually, to, to write till the end. So, yeah, that's the thing I enjoy the most. Discovering a new comment, I'm like, oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> well, 
on the other hand, what do you like least about writing? At the beginning, when I started writing, I always imagined that I would be super satisfied holding my novel finished in my hands. You know, this very first print, you're like, okay, I've done it. That's it. And actually, I have the feeling every time I receive the first printing of my novel, I'm like, I, I could always improve the story. I should have written this chapter maybe in this way. Maybe I should, I should, maybe I should have developed another character for this scene. Maybe I should have, you know, this constant perpetual feeling of unsatisfaction. But I think it's part of the job. And I have learned to deal with it. So you have to move on. And it's part of the job to accept that, that you have to move on. It's not perfect and that's okay. Uh, you just delivered a story that was the best at this moment and it's part of your evolution. Of course you evaluate, of course you change, and next year you will produce something else that will be even better. So yeah, that's the thing I enjoy the least, receiving that copy of, of the book and being like, ah, ah. <laughs> Well, that's, that's a very good philosophy because, uh, you know, nothing's ever going to be perfect and you're always going to find things that, you know, you want changed or you, you second guess yourself, but. Exactly. Um, True. Yeah. Well, you said you write on uh, buses and trains. Uh, where's your favorite place to write? So I, I do love writing in trains and streetcars um, because you have 40 minutes, 30 minutes, you know, you have this one ride and you have to produce as much as you can. Uh, there is this sense of emergency that forces you to produce. And I think it's very, well, that, that's very effective. It helps you to keep the daily habits uh, of writing, you know, this daily routine that is a key of success in, uh, in writing. But now <laughs> I write uh, on my desk, face to the window. That's my favorite place uh, so that I can see beautiful trees. And I usually have a chocolate and cider, you know, things like that to help me to focus. <laughs> well, that's good. Thank you. Yeah. Windows can be a plus and a minus when you're writing. <laughs> uh, what's next on your publication schedule? What are, what are your plans? Well, um, actually, I am writing the sequence, uh, the sequel, sorry, of Masquerade. Uh, I am writing the sequel of Masquerade. So I'm working on that. It's been uh, three weeks, uh, around three weeks. So I should be finishing it by, um, by November, December. I think I will have finished the first draft. Um, and I will put aside this draft. I will take my time this time to put it away and try to mature things. And I will get back to it in January. So I think it should be out in June 2021. Nice. So do you switch off writing the romance and the fantasy? Absolutely, I do. So you and don't try to write them at the same time, right? No, I can't. I can't. I would love to. I would love to be able to switch my brain from a story to another. I feel the fantasy novel is here. The third novel of uh, Memories of High Zion is, you know, I think it's playing backside. Um, I got some dialogues coming, so I take some notes, but I keep it for the, the next summer, actually. I keep all my energy focused on the sequel of uh, Masquerade. I prefer to do that. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, that, that usually works best, at least for me it does. But um, do you have any advice for people who think that they might want to try their hand at writing? Yeah. Um, actually, I would say the, the daily routine, and that's the hardest thing. But, you know, it could be one page or three pages or ten pages. As long as you do it and you sit down every day, um, I would say this daily routine in, uh, in your writing is the key. It is uh, the key of satisfaction uh, because one day, three pages after three pages after three pages, you reach your full novel. So I would say that. And I would recommend, even if, I don't know why I, I never could do it because I'm, I've never been into short stories, but I don't think I like the format, but Elizabeth Gilbert, you know, the writer of uh, Eat, Pray, Love, uh, said that it was a way her agent found, it, found her. So if you want, to be traditionally published, I would recommend you to participate to short novel, short stories contests. That's a good way to be noticed. I hadn't heard that. that that's very interesting about her. Yeah. yeah, it is. You know, with a short story, you can be noticed and contacted because your short story has been published in magazines and online blogs and your name starts to exist. So it can be a good way to be 
to be recommended and noticed by an agent. Wonderful. That's good. I, one thing I find satisfying about short stories is you complete them a whole lot faster than you do novels. True. Well, is there anything that I haven't asked about that you would like to tell us? Um, well, I mentioned it, but um, as you have uh, an audience, um, maybe they would be sensitive to that. But I would say the, the importance of giving a feedback uh, to the writers is really immense. I don't think people imagine how hard it is to actually write a full novel out of nothing, out of nowhere, to create characters and dialogues and something that would be lively and will sound real, you know. And um, there is not a lot of recognition actually for the writers. Um, actors, directors, singers, they are on stage, they have this immediate contact uh, with the audience that we writers, we do not have. So when you begin a novel, you, you have that intuition that maybe your novel will be read, maybe it will be a success or not. And it's a kind of mission impossible, but that's fine. You accept, it's part of the deal. Um, so it's like being an actor going on stage every night and performing the play with nobody <laughs> face to them. So that's actually kind of painful when you sit down on your chair every morning and you write your novel, even if there will be nobody reading your novel. But yeah, this is how you feel when, when you do that. So give a thumb, uh, like the Facebook page, retweet, you know, it's not very much for you, um, but it means the whole world for us, the writers. And uh, whatever is a platform you choose. And it's like, you know, the clap uh, that resonates in the dark for the actor on stage. It's, uh, it's really precious for the writer. Yeah. Yeah, I, my audience knows that that's one of my favorite soapboxes is oh. to leave reviews. <laughs> Fantastic. It's so, it's so hard to get reviews a lot of the time. And uh, I also recommend that uh, if you don't like a book, if there's something in it that you think could be improved, write to the author instead of sticking that in the review. Totally. I totally agree with you. Because that's also part of the feedback. It's not only about positive reviews. It's also having a feedback, okay, I don't really believe in this character. Um, or maybe this side of the story took a little bit too much place uh, in the novel. You know, this kind of feedback helps us to improve ourselves. And um, it's not a family who can give you this, uh, this feedback, actually. So you're totally right. Yeah, this feedback, whether it is positive or negative. Yeah, and uh, from readers actually reading that genre, that's priceless, is that, is that feedback. Yeah, it's very precious, yeah. Well, do you think your uh, work in uh, the cinema field uh, actually helps your writing? Do you storyboard everything or what? Um, yeah, actually, I use the technique of the screen uh, writers uh, to develop my story, to develop the characters and uh, to also create an arch, uh, the beginning, the middle of the end, the um, meeting of the mentor, the, um, the climax. And um, yeah, I actually I participated uh, to the uh, story seminar by, uh, by uh, Robert McKee. Uh, which is a very uh, famous screenwriter and, uh, uh, and a trainer. And um, he does teach for cinema. So I have been very much uh, printed and uh, inspired by this way of writing, writing on screen, definitely. And I think I also do write in a visual way. Uh, people told me, oh, the way you create an atmosphere, uh, it's, uh, it's very visual. We always see a movie in front of our eyes. So I suppose it uh, definitely had an impact on the way I do write. Yeah, definitely. Well, that's great. And so you're following the hero's journey mostly on the... Yeah, well, uh, like you said, um, I, I have always been inspired by mythologies, tales. That's uh, this kind of story that really fed my childhood. So when I read that Joseph Campbell, you know, uh, theory, I was, uh, I was struck. I was like, yeah, definitely. It totally makes sense. And when I start, started studying cinema uh, in my early 20s, I discovered that actually every single movie, almost every single movie is built on that model. So you can actually apply it to every story um, and even your personal story, actually. Yes, absolutely. And that there's something in that structure that resonates with people just on a very basic level. Yes, and it is universal. 
even a Japanese person can connect with that or a South America person. It's, um, it's universal. Yes, it is. Well, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you, Lee. I, I really enjoyed it. And <laughs> I'll put the interview up on the page and in the comments, I will link to the books. So uh, make sure and you're in the U.S., you're in Canada, you're in English, and you're in French, right? So. Totally. I cover the both markets. Yeah. And ebooks and the paperback, right? Yeah. <laughs> Everything you want. <laughs> well, thanks again. This, this has been just great. And I really appreciate it. And I'll get the interview up just as soon as I can. Thank you very much, Lynn. Thank you very much.